Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back. We're here to discuss, of course, the misbooking of a future Hall of Famer, one of the most innovative, impactful wrestlers to ever exist in the modern age, has specifically changed up most of what happened. Most of people's wrestling style, how they perceive wrestling, or the style of it, Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy is now, like, over mid-card purgatory, as per se, that he'll, he's, even though he's, like, a four- to three-time world champion, he's still getting perceived as, like, this tag team lower carter, and I don't mind him being a tag team wrestler. But it's like they perceive him as much. They had him trying to do something with the Hardy bros, and then that garbage went off. Then he then he took a couple months off. I think he was also nursing over an injury. They have him jobbing over to Jinder Mahal, and Jinder Mahal returns with uh, the the steroided Singh Brothers 2.0, and then he finally picked up a win against Cedric Alexander, that's now a jobber. Uh, like I don't know which direction they're going for. It's like they perceive the notion all because the guy's there. That doesn't mean they can't put him over like a, a more better look. Like, I don't know why. Jeff Hardy is one of the most influential parts of pro wrestling when it comes to the modern style. Whenever you see people do sentons, more tag team maneuvers coming over the outside, more creative ways to use the ladder, or just their, or just the perceived look of most people, it's Jeff Hardy. Like you saw back in the day when he was getting, uh pushed over to the moon when he was more perceived as a singles favorite because he had more cr physical charisma than his brother Matt. Even though Matt can make innovative, uh, dynamic ways to make his character evolve over the years, Jeff Hardy will always be a fan favorite just because of his look, his persona, his character, the way he just has that charisma with younger and older fans. You can't change that. As much as Matt Hardy has shown to be more better at influencing his character, being a good mic worker. I think he's a better mic worker than his brother. Matt just has that package that makes him more profitable. Uh, Jeff has that more, that has more of a way of being more profitable than Matt. And that's hard to say, because I do like the, the broken gimmick. Fits over Matt, and it just adjusted for that time period where it felt like he was just being stale. So, that worked. And I was at a t time when I was watching the reunion of the Hardy Boys back in 07. And I watched his singles push up to the moon until uh, CM Punk uh, wrestled him out of SmackDown. And then he went over to TNA where I watched the rest of his career. And it's shown that he's still, even most of the fuck-ups Jeff Hardy has done over most of his career, he is still a perceivable top star, whether you like it or not. And that shows over most people that have their own personal demons. Jeff just has that consensus to just make everybody fall in love with him. And I, I don't know why WWE isn't perceiving that. He's just a lower carter. He won the US title, like, twice. Uh, I think he also won the IC belt again. And it was such a forgettable raid because they just pushed it over to Sami Zayn. And Sami Zayn sucks. You're, it's like, I don't know, what are they doing? He came back with Matt back in 2017. He's been here ever since. And it's like they never perceived him to even be favorable for the main event scene when he's beaten guys that are in the Hall of Fame. I don't get that. It's obvious that he's still a perceived fan favorite. Hell, people still want him to people still want him to come out with no more words. And he's still one of the most recognizable guys that can still go and still in good shape for his age. Why? I don't get it. It's just completely out of the blue. I Maybe this is just because I was low, low key a Jeff Hardy fan when I was a kid. Most people that even were watching over that period were. And that could be because of the crazy hair or the crazy face paint he had later later in his career. His amazing move set, just his his you know his feuds over with Randy Orton, Triple H, Edge, Matt Hardy. It just evolving like Jeff just had that consensus to evolve from a younger jobber to a tag team superstar to a fan favorite mid Carter to a top of the line main eventer. You don't see that type of cruise to the top unless you're technically Drew McIntyre being the last homegrown guy to do stuff like that. But the thing with Drew McIntyre, even though he looks like a star, the guy talks like a star, 
I mean, talks like he can be a star, but he's just not having that type of innate reaction whenever you see him in the ring or you have him speak over a promo because he just doesn't have that fan appeal. He just talks like any other monotone, regular, bland-ass baby face you see on WWE now. And people are now begging over the brim so he can just have that Willow character so they can feel like there's some part of him that can still be a major part of WWE TV. Especially with all the cartoony shit they're doing now with Alexa Bliss. What's wrong with that? There is no excuse why you couldn't be still pushing over some older guys over your extent that most of your indie darlings or most of the guys that were getting shoved over your throat over on WWE TV are now getting released. If Braun Strowman getting released wasn't a huge example of WWE not tolerating this decline over viewership over the last couple of years, then I don't know what will. Like, come on. I'm not saying that we need to push Jeff Hardy over over the brim. I would love to see one more title, world title reign out of Jeff Hardy. Just for old time's sake. Just push him over as a transitional champion. Or hell, have, have him hold it before, like, probably TLC or some shit. Like, do something to make sure there's a major reason I should come over and watch Raw. And that's why many people are not tuning in. They don't have a recognizable name that's going to push over on the top of the card that most people want to have a good reason to tune in, and Jeff Hardy's one of those reasons to tune in. I don't get it. It's ridiculous. Lashley's, Lashley and McIntyre are good champions, but they're just not conceded or over enough to have that much of a draw, even though these guys look good and they can push over, over a good match. But they're still stapling around a 1.4, a 1.7. They're not, they're not averaging as much as WWE perceived to be, and that could be all over the story direction. But that can also be perceived that they're just not that superstar or household names, and that's both WWE and their fault. And most people just don't want to admit that because people think, oh, WWE is responsible if a guy get over. No, it's also the star's job. You think it's your jobs? You think it's your boss's fault that you didn't get a a promotion that that never makes sense? That will never make sense. Sometimes over nepotism, I can get that, but when it comes to being an employee, working your ass off to even impress them to get an opportunity, that's like that's the key. You get the opportunity. Whatever else you try to do to get yourself up in the business, whether you're a female, gay, or a different race. It's all on your ability to attract more consumers. And WWE has failed over that thing for like nearly a decade and a half. So that's just telling you that I think uh, Jeff Hardy is just really getting neglected. He's probably going to go over to AEW with his brother. That could be the perceived notion. Bring back the Hardy boys there. That can be a, that can be a conceited help over for a draw for for. For, for AEW, especially over their decline in rating, because they don't want to watch another two-hour smart fest full of mid-carters trying to feel like they're stars and not really making themselves any. It, that's how I feel. That's why AEW's dropping over ratings anyway. We all know it. That's why nobody watches it anymore. Even, like, the perceived smart YouTubers don't even want to watch it anymore. Ugh. I feel like WWE is really dropping the ball over this one. And this could bite them because either than Orton, Mysterio, and Hardy has been one of the more like modern fans, biggest fan favorites to even be pushed over back to the top of the card. And it's more realistic too because he's done that before and he's still in good shape to do so. And he's still shown to have good matches, so I don't know why. And he also has different type of caricatures that can fit. RK Bro sucks. Whatever Alexa Bliss is doing sucks. Try to push over the caviar. Get some other guys to be over on TV. I don't want to see Reginald. I don't want to see Sonya... Uh, not Sonya Deville. No, I don't want to see Shayna Baszler. That scuffed... That scuffed domestic abused raccoon dyke should not be on TV more than Jeff Hardy. That makes zero sense. It just... Any idea at all to just make every match be 15 minutes long. Get out the window.
please get guys that's supposed to be stars and push them as so and make it some more confu consumable. I know that's a tall order for a three-hour show, but it can be done. People would rather watch three-hour nitros than this. So that's that's a complete difference. So that's it from my point of view. Thanks for watching.